Hello everyone. We are back again with our Karka videos. Thank you for watching our um, Atma Karka videos and giving us so much love and wonderful comments. And with the popular demand, we're going to be doing Dara Karka today. So I welcome Shanati uh, for our uh, Dara Karka video. Hello, Shanati. Namaste, Navji. It's such a blessing, honor, and pleasure to be here again to the, continue our Karaka series. We discussed the Atma Karaka, and now we're going to discuss the second most uh, popular Karaka as the Dara Karaka. It's one of the primary Karakas used in understanding synastry, compatibility, the energy of our spouse, and also what energy in general we're attracted to and like to spend time with. So I'm really excited to share this with our astrological community. And thank you so much for, for sharing this time with me today. Thank you. Thank you, Shanti. Thank you for uh, joining us today. And thank you for always, you know, enlightening us with the more great information, new information. And everyone, I hope you guys enjoy this video too. All right, we can start with our Dara Karaka. So just to give a little bit of an introduction on what the Dara Karaka is, I'm going to share my wife, Agra Devi, and my chart to understand how to use the Dara Karaka and how we understand it in the Jyotish. So on the left is my wife, Rachel's chart, and on the right is my chart. And so when you're looking for the Dara Karaka position, it's the opposite of the Atma Karaka. So the Atma Karaka is the planet in your chart, which has the highest degree. The Dara Karaka is the planet in your chart, which has the lowest degree. And so I just want to use this in my wife and I's chart to help us understand a little bit about what this energy really is all about. So if you look at my wife's chart here, the lowest planetary degree in her chart is Saturn. So Saturn is my wife's Dara Karaka, and it falls in Kumba in Aquarius Rashi. So this is very significant in terms of understanding compatibility and synastry in a person's chart. We'll talk more about what each specific Dara Karaka means, but I just wanted to explain how we see it and how we understand it. So Saturn is her Dara Karaka position, and it's in the sign of Aquarius. That would mean that she is most compatible with the spouse, which has Saturn energy and Aquarius energy. And so there is no coincidence that if you look at my chart, my ascendancy, my Lagnash is the Aquarius. So her Dara Karaka is in the same Rashi as my ascendancy. This is something which would be used to understand the compatibility in our relationship. Um, so because the Aquarius is ruled by Shani and she has that Shani very strong in its natural position, in its Mula Tricona sign of Aquarius. And so Rahu also acts a lot like Saturn, right? Rahu is said to be most similar to Saturn of the seven major planets. And so there's a lot of compatibility between my chart and her Dara Karaka position. Additionally, if you look at my chart, my Dara Karaka is here, which is Jupiter. Jupiter is my Dara Karaka planet, and it's in the sign of Taurus. Now, the Jupiter Dara Karaka, just like how my, her Dara Karaka relates to my ascendancy, my Dara Karaka relates to my wife's ascendancy because my Dara Karaka is. Guru Deva, Jupiter, Brihas Pataye. And if you look at my wife Rachel's chart, she has Jupiter right in the ascendant at 16 degrees. So again, both of our ascendancies relate to each other's Dara Karaka. And this is a huge, good compatibility aspect between my wife and I. Now, additionally, you don't just use the Dara Karaka position to understand compatibility. We look at the Moon Nakshatra. And we also look at for a woman, the position of her Mars and for a man, the position of her Venus. So I'm just gonna mention that as a secondary aspect to further understand compatibility. If you look at my wife's Mars here in the Sagittarius Rashi, and then you start to understand that in my Sagittarius Bhava is Saturn, which is her, her Dara Karka. So you're starting to see this kind of triggering relationship in the chart between these compatibility aspects and understanding how two people are going to worse, work best together. And so again, her Mars, which is the Karaka for men, in addition to Jupiter, 
which is her Jupiter is where my Venus and Moon are. So again, I've discussed a lot of these compatibility aspects before, but from a Mars perspective, that Sagittarius being where my Saturn, which is her dark Harka is, is another dark Harka relationship compatibility aspect. Um, now for a man, you would look at the Venus and my Venus is in Libra, Rashi, and then that is her ascendant or her rising sign as well. So again, luckily, we are hitting all these compatibility uh, aspects on a lot of different charts and it relates to the Venus position and it relates to the Mars position and it relates to the Dharakarika position. And when all of these things kind of relate back to the Dharakarika position in the chart, it's really gonna help these two people not just get along in terms of compatibility, but one of the Dharakarika significations is they're going to enjoy spending most of their time with this type of Dharakarika person. And so obviously that helps a lot in the relationship when your partner gets to be your best friend and you really enjoy spending time with them as well. So I just wanted to point that out, how we understand the Dharakarika and other relationship compatibility aspects before we start to dive into this uh, discussion in further detail. So I hope that was beneficial for everybody. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Shanti. That's beautiful. You got me, Venus and Moon together. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to, um, we'll start with Sun being um, at, uh, Dara Karka for someone and how it shows up in the chart and compatibility. Definitely. So the sun is a great dark Karaka position, although traditionally speaking, um, again, when we look at dark Karaka as it's traditionally been understood, it's a little bit different for a man having that dark Karaka position, a male versus a female having that dark Karaka position, um, not because of any gender bias or anything like that, but because of the disposition and balance of masculine and feminine energies something that we understand in the Dharakarika. So when the sun is the Dharakarika position, which means you have the sun in the lowest degree of your chart, first we have to understand the dignity of the sun, the nakshatra lord of the sun, the nakshatra deva uh, of your sun. It all kind of relates to these different aspects of compatibility. But generally speaking, when the sun is the Dharakarika in the chart, you are going to enjoy spending time with and you are going to be most attracted and compatible with someone who has a high understanding of their self-empowerment. I like to use the term swasta, which is the ability to stand in your dharma, the ability to stand in yourself. And so the sun Karika position means that you will be attracted to someone and most compatible with someone who believes in themselves, is confident, is a natural leader, has natural kind of power aspects to who they are, where they're successful in what they do and they believe in themselves. And they also might be given a high position in their life, such as director, such as manager, such as CEO. But when it comes to the romantic compatibility aspect, which is what we're gonna focus on with the Dharakarika, what the person is not gonna be attracted to is really helpful to understand when we, when we have a Dharakarika position. If you have the sun as your Dharakarika, you are not going to be attracted to someone who has low self-esteem, someone who doesn't believe in themselves, someone who doesn't speak with confidence. You know, this, this is something that is absolutely essential is that this person has a lot of empowerment in themselves, natural leadership abilities, a strong sense of wanting to grow and prosper and be successful in their life. And but with each Dharakarika position, even though the significations are associated with that planet, there are some aspects where if the Dharakarika is out of balance, right, that energy of what you're attracted to is out of balance, that's not going to be compatible for you either. And so when the sun is the Dharakarika, they have to find that balance of believing in themselves and confidence and success because someone who is too arrogant, someone who has a large ego, someone who thinks that they're better, more superior than other people is also going to be very unattractive for the Dharakarika position of sun. Again, for anyone with the sun Dharakarika, you'd rather that your partner have more confidence 
than less confidence because you're totally not going to be attracted to an individual who has low confidence and, and, and a low self-esteem doesn't believe in themselves. But the balanced energy is really what the individual is looking for with the Dharakarika. And so they don't want someone who is brash and arrogant and has a superiority complex and thinks that they're holier than thou and thinks that they're better than thou. That is not going to be a strong compatibility aspect. You kind of have want to have that right balance between egotistical and lack of self-appreciation, which is a, a nice, humble and, and, and confident expression of the individual energy, but not in a way where it degrades or downplays other people's personalities or roles in their life. Again, a, a good leader, a good king, a good queen is not just someone who's a leader, but also helps everyone else in the empowerment of themselves. And so someone with the Sun Karika, Sun Dara Karika position, they're gonna help th their, their partner is not going to knock them down, right? And, and be like, I'm better than you. No, they're going to empower their partner to be just as confident and just as successful as they are. So that's just what I wanted to mention about the Sun Dara Karika position and how it really needs to be balanced for the most compatibility. All right. And um, does it mean like, for example, if someone has sun as their Dara Karika, will it change according to if their sun, like their sun in their chart is exalted, debilitated, placed in like, you know. Totally. I mean, one of the best examples is, okay, so let's say the sun is your Dara Karika, but that sun is in Tula, is in Libra Rashi, which means it's in a debilitation condition. That would mean that that individual doesn't have a lot of confidence in themselves, right? And so the Dara Karika position in that chart would suggest, okay, I need a partner who's going to help me with that. I need a partner who's going to help me feel better about myself and isn't going to encourage me to be myself. I mean, the sun in a Venus sign can be very much like this, especially at the Dara Karika. Now, let's say that sun is in Aries Rashi. It's in Ashwini or Barani Nakshatra, right? If we're looking at this position of the sun, the person might be too egotistical. They might be a little arrogant. And again, they're going to need someone who might even be a little bit stronger than them. So that was going to take them down a notch. So this means that, yes, you want someone who is confident in themselves, but maybe they're confident in themselves in more of a humble way. And so they're actually, even though the sun is exalted and it's the Dharakarka, an, another powerful person needs another powerful person. But that mm -hmm. other but because of the native exaltation in the natives chart, they might need someone who's actually going to take their ego down a notch, right? And I think no matter what, our spouses tend to do that from time to time. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So next is moon, moon Dara Karaka. So the moon Dara Karaka is, is really beautiful position for the Dara Karaka because it means you're going to be attracted to someone with the feminine energy, you know what I mean? With a motherly energy. This is someone who is devoted. This is someone who's caring. This is someone who's nurturing. This is someone who is, you know, can be very much dedicated to their family and a true patriot to their homeland and, and, and a real lover of other people. Because this means that what you need in terms of romantic compatibility is someone who is sympathetic someone who is compassionate, someone who is empathetic, someone who is intuitive. And I know a lot of times in romantic relationships because I do a lot of like, you know, romantic counseling in my Jyotish. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's funny because a lot of times in romantic relationship, we expect our partners to read our minds and no one can read our minds. They can't know when we're in a good mood. They can't know when we're in a bad mood unless we talk to them about it. But if you have the moon Dara Karika position, you're naturally gonna be attracted to someone who is empathetic, compassionate and intuitive, which means if anyone is going to have the possibility for their partners to read their mind, we're looking at a moon Dara Karika position. Now, the thing about this vibration is, of course they say that men are attracted to their mothers, right? There's that old psychological thing, we marry someone like our mothers, um, but, this aspect can actually become severely out of balance because when we 
the, the, the downside of the moon Darakarika position, especially if you're a guy, is you're going to be attracted to someone who's going to take care of you. And again, we all need caretakers in our romantic relationships, but that's not to be the pri primary energy of a relationship is I can't take care of myself because I'm a baby, I'm a young child. So I'm gonna look at my moon Darakarika position and look for someone who's gonna take care of me. So that can be really out of balance. And then also even you know, with women who have that moon Darakarika position, you know, a lot of times there can be men who are in touch with their emotions, right? They're in touch with their sensitivity. They're in touch with their intuition and they're compassionate in their nature. But men also have this tendency to be stoic, which means when we experience emotions, if we're not spiritually evolving in that way, we want to shove them down. We want to repress them because we don't want to show our tears. We don't want to show our, and, and this is changing with the evolution of consciousness, right? Because all men possess feminine energy and all women possess masculine energy. But a lot of times when a woman has a Darakarika position, they need a man, they need a partner that is going to be very much compassionate, sympathetic and intuitive to them. And so for, for a woman with that position, you really need a man who has a lot of emotional maturity and is in touch with this aspect of who he is and is a caretaker, you know what I mean? They can even possess that energy of like maybe the depending on the 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 feminine's chart, the woman's chart, maybe the woman goes out at work and the man who has that moon energy in his chart that the female Darakarika needs is a stay-at-home father. And we see that this is manifesting more with the evolution of consciousness. Gender roles are changing quite significantly. Um, but yeah, it's it's a beautiful position for someone to understand that they need someone who is very emotionally mature and has that capacity for, for empathy and intuition. So like emotional connection and being emotional needs being met would be the most important, uh, um, you know, important for the person who has the moon karakarka, right? Without a doubt. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Someone who's really emotionally nurturing and then they can be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that it's going to be someone who we don't have to pull mm -hmm. their teeth to get them to be caring. It should be right. their natural disposition, exactly. um, which means, you know, if, 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 if someone has the moon Darakarika and they're not feeling well on any given day, they should have the kind of partner that asks, you know what? I can tell that you're not feeling well and what can I do to help? Right, right. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice position, yeah. And and again, uh, if, if you have that moon Darakarika and that person is moon Cancer, moon Taurus, you know, it, it's it's really moon Leo even, it's, it's a really beautiful uh, relationship. Wonderful. Next would be Venus. Venus Dharakarika. So Venus Dharakarika is, is a little bit misunderstood um, because again, a lot of times with Venus, it's like, okay, you know, Venus Dharakarika, which means we need someone who's really pretty or beautiful or handsome. And we need them, you know, to, 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 to be able to be very elegant. And no, that's not what the moon, uh, Venus Dharakarika is. The Venus Dharakarika, when you have the Venus Dharakarika, and of course the natal, the natal position of Venus in both the natal and the spouse's chart are significant here. But one of the things that I noticed with the Venus Dharakarika is that a lot of times if you have it, the kind of partner that you need is someone who is able to appreciate the beauty and joy and pleasure of life. Because life can be very serious. But part of the Venus Darakarika position means I'm going to be compatible with another partner who is able to enjoy the beautiful weather, who is able to enjoy the flowers, who is able to enjoy art, music, and entertainment, going to the art museum, watching a great movie, going to the play, you know, whatever it is, their ability to enjoy all of these aspects of life. Because again, Venus has to do with the five senses, the five indriya. And when there's this energy of the Venus Dharakarika, it is really going to support a native 
to be attracted to someone who has this kind of like appreciation of using their senses in a really refined manner. So again, it can be out of balance if the Venus is the Dharakarika, because sometimes for people who have the Venus Dharakarika based on the position in the natal and the spouse's chart, they're attracted to someone who is hedonistic. That means they're attracted to someone who is addicted to the pleasure. And this is the dark side of the Venus Dharakarika position is that until you would kind of evolve with your own relationship with Venus based on the Venus Mahadasha or significant Venus transits in your prashna in, in your chart, you're, you might be attracted to someone who is an alcoholic, is a drug addict, is addicted to the money, is addicted to the job, is addictive to the physical intimacy at expression of the relationship. And as we come to understand the evolution of a romantic compatibility, it's not about how much pleasure that two people can give each other. It's how much can we grow together as partners in this spiritual journey for like the rest of our lives. And I think that's like, not to get too far off topic, but like divorce is bigger now than it has ever been before. And I took philosophy of love. And like part of the reason that that is is because we're attracted to people because of their qualities and because of what we have in common with them and because of our relationship with pleasure is it match up with their relationship with pleasure. And then people change. And what was pleasurable for them at one moment or what they were attracted to in another person's qualities, it changes. And then there's divorce. We have to understand that, especially with the Venus Dharakarika position, it's not how happy we can make each other. It's how much we can learn from each other in terms of our growth, the growth of our senses, the growth of our relationship with pleasure. And so usually the most compatible thing about a Venus Dharakarika position is that your spouse or your partner is balanced, is moderate, is not excessive in their actions or their pleasures, has a nice relationship with money where they don't undervalue it, where they don't overvalue it, yeah, they give a lot of time and energy to their partners, but not in an unhealthy way where they're disregarding their family or their spirituality. You know what I mean? It, a, a, a Venus Dharakarika position is most compatible when the other native is really balanced and moderate in all of the aspects of their life, body, mind, and soul. Mm, absolutely. So someone romantic, artistic, and refined in nature, right? In a positive way. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and that's really definitely going to be compatible for the Venus Dharakarika position, but they can't be the hopeless romantic, <laughs> right? They, they can't romanticize everything as being romantic because sometimes things like changing the baby's diaper, there's just nothing romantic about that. <laughs> right. The responsibility we have as spouse and partner too. Right. So someone who takes that responsibility in a way where they're enjoying their partner, but doesn't take it too lightly and get, you know, washed away in the, in the, in the fantasy of romance, right? The reality of romance is, is what's compatible. So not, yeah. So not staying up in the sky with La La Land, coming down to ground. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Like, Being grounded yeah. in the relationship. A nice example might explain this is like, okay, it's someone who wants to take a vacation with their partner, but isn't going to spend more than 10% of their savings account to go on that vacation. Right. You know, because yeah. that would mean that they have the right relationship with money and that they're doing the right thing for the romantic relationship, but not at the cost and the expense of other things. Right. Thank you. Mercury? So Mercury Dharakarika uh, is, is, is absolutely, you know, really, really interesting because a lot of times with people that I see with the Mercury Dharakarika, one of the things that I've heard is that the brain is the most erogenous zone. That means that the brain is actually what attracts one person to another. But that's not true for everyone, although there is some truth to that for everyone. But for the Mercury Dharakarika position, there is nothing more attractive that you will find in another person than their mind. That's mm -hmm. their intelligence. That's the way that they comprehend. The way that they understand is going to tickle you. 
And that means that that's when, when they speak, when they share, when they're teaching, when they're learning, they are able to kind of digest and understand information and then express it to you. So one of the, in addition to the intellect of the person being the most attractive, the conversational or communication skill for the Dharakarika native with Mercury is also extremely important. A lot of the happiness for a Mercury Dharakarika position comes from you and your partner learning together and engaging in a deep, deep intellectual philosophical conversation where the thing about the Mercury Dharakarika is you wanna be able to learn from your partner because they're smart. And mm. so the most compatible aspect here for a Mercury Dharakarika is to have a highly intelligent partner, mm. to have a partner that always wants to learn. And it's not just about their ability to speak, but also Mercury Dharakarika is most compatible with other people who are willing to listen. The ability to listen to other people and, and specifically listen to your partner and to have your partner listen to you is one of the most essential aspects of the Mercury Dharakarika position. I mean, additionally, some other things about the Mercury Dharakarika is that these people are very comedic. They have a sense of humor. And so the Mercury Dharakarika position is very much attracted to another individual, which has a great sense of humor, which makes jokes and the intelligent jokes. We're not talking about silly, unmature jokes, right? We're talking about highly intelligent people that are able to have a quick wit, like to learn, like to have good conversation, and that's what's gonna be attracted. Now, when it's out of balance, if you have a Mercury Dharakarika position, you might be attracted to someone or end up with the spouse, which is overly analytical. And of course, the analysis of life and understanding things is like helpful. You know what I mean? At its right dosage. But when that dosage of analysis becomes over extreme, you're dealing with obsessive compulsive disorders. You're dealing with people who are, uh, you know, are, are not able to have a spirituality because they are too mathematical. They are too intellectual. So again, th this is the challenging aspect of depending on the Mercury's position, if you're a Mercury Dharakarika, what is going to be good and bad for you? It's someone who, again, is intellectually oriented and does things that support their intellectual growth, but not at the expense of being too overly analytical about things. So that would mean people with uh, Mercury Dharakarika in general enjoy company of people who are very communicative, intelligent, you know, someone they can also have fun with and have, you know, hobbies that they can enjoy together. A hundred percent, but nothing angers a Mercury Dharakarika more than someone who talks too much and talks with the unintelligence or what I call the diarrhea out of the mouth. Um, so this is this energy where someone is speaking, speaking, and speaking, but they're repeating the same thing. They're talking about things that are not interesting. So again, they, you're, you're totally right. The Mercury Dharakarika loves this person. They can have a great conversation with just as much as they hate the person who has the stupid conversation. Right. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, next, oh, Jupiter, Jupiter. So Jupiter Dharakarika is my Dharakarika position. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely appreciate the Jupiter Dharakarika. Um, the, the Jupiter Dharakarika, it suggests that the kind of partner that you're looking for is someone who is wise, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who seeks philosophical, spiritual, and worldly wisdom, which means they are usually educated or highly educated. They might not be religious per se, but they'll definitely be spiritual in terms of they're trying to become the best person they can be because it's all about that reflection, right? Someone with the Jupiter Dharakarika position, they're striving to become the best person they can be. And so they're gonna need that mirror in another person who's trying to better themselves. This would mean that, again, they don't have to be a guru, but they have to be someone who once, you know, likely they've gone to the college, 
maybe that they want to go to the postgraduate education. They have a highly intelligent job. You know, they're, they're, they might not be religious, but they're able to have spiritual conversations. They're able to have philosophical, particularly metaphysical conversations. Um, and there's just this really, really powerful energy, which is like, okay, I am not necessarily believing in something blind because someone who is highly intelligent isn't going to just believe in something blind. No, they're going to believe in something through their experience. And so it's very interesting as a Jupiter Dharakarka native myself, what I is most compatible for me in my relationship is someone that I can always learn lessons from. And again, they might be teaching me my lessons. My wife is always teaching me lessons. And the thing is, is, you know, I'm on a spiritual path, but sometimes I can lose sight of where I am in my spiritual path, right? I, I'm going for something, but I get distracted. My wife is the perfect example of someone who says, okay, you're not being the person that you want to be. So now here's how you're not being that person that you want to be. Out of love, I'm telling you that. So you can be more connected and try to get back on that path, what you know you're striving for. So they're going to make you be kind of transparent. And it's not just about the, the, the Jupiter Dharakarika position, which is a little bit different from Mercury. The Mercury kind of wants someone who is very knowledgeable and intelligent. And the Jupiter Dharakarika position is also someone who wants that. But it's more about that that person shows it through their actions. And so for the Jupiter Dharakarika position, there's a lot of lessons. It can be a little bit difficult sometimes because there's, there's no time when if you have Jupiter as the Dharakarika where the lesson will stop in the romantic relationship. Lessons will always start to manifest in your life at any given time. Um, and these people, they, they're attracted to different cultures and different spiritualities. And, 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 and they really are try to be as much as possible open-minded about understanding different things. But they're definitely philosophical in their nature, uh, the partner of the Jupiter Dharakarika. They're moral and ethical in their nature, which means they don't just talk the talk, but they walk the walk and they try to lead a better life. And, they, and the thing is, is, when a strong Jupiter, a person is a good person without need of recognition that they're the good person. So someone is the Jupiter Dharakarika, their partner is most compatible for someone who is very wise, very knowledgeable and ethical, but doesn't, isn't like, I'm a great person because of all of these things. No, they lead a, a very transparent life. And so a, a, a disharmonious, a non, you know, supportive Jupiter Dharakarika position, it might be someone who is wise, but think they're a know-it-all, right? They think that I know more than this person and I'm deeper than this person and I'm more educated than this person. That could happen with the Jupiter Dharakarika attraction, but that's not going to be compatible. No guru says I'm a guru. If as soon as the guru says I'm a guru, then they're not a guru anymore. Because again, it's humility that is the most attractive thing for the wise person uh, who's looking for a partner with the Jupiter Dharakarikas is humble wisdom, not, not inflated ego wisdom. And also they themselves being very uh, optimistic people, right? So optimistic, that means that when bad things happen in their life, they might not even say that they're bad, you mm -hmm. know? Like the, the Jupiter Dharakarika spouse is someone who, when they get sick, they don't tell you. When they're unhappy, they don't tell you because they know that that's going to pass. So what's the point of bringing the negativity into this moment? Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. Thank you. Now, uh, Mars. Mars as your Dharakarika. So Mars Dharakarika, it's intense. I mean, I'll... I'll it's a little more intense um, for a man because just like how men can be stoic, the, you know, a lot of times that, again, this is changing. Gender roles are changing. I don't believe that they're as significant as they used to be. But the Mars Dharakarika position 
means that you're going to be attracted to someone and most compatible with someone who is a go-getter, who is constantly progressing, is constantly doing things, right? Some people are, you know, they want a partner who's at home and is going to be at home and, and take care of you and take care of the family. No, not the Mars Dharakarika. The Mars Dharakarika is going to be attracted to someone who is constantly progressing, who is constantly advancing. And so usually if you, and there are exceptions here, but if you have the Mars Dharakarika position, that might mean that your partner is not at home most of the time because they're too busy being outside of the house, going to their next level of growth in their career, going to the next level of their growth in spirituality, depending on where the Mars is positioned. And they're also very much, um, Mars has to do with the action and energy and the exercise, the physical exercise of the body. So people with the Mars Dharakarika, they want their partner to be in good shape. They want their partner to work out. They may even be attracted to their partner who is a professional fighter, karate, mixed martial arts, wrestling. Like these are just different things where it's like, okay, I'm actually most compatible with someone who is intense. And, 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 and there's a positive side of that aggressive energy where they're constantly doing things that they know they need to do and they don't procrastinate. You mm -hmm. know, they, they, they don't put things to the side. You know, they're constantly being like, okay, what's the next thing that I can do to help further emphasize success in this area of my life? Now, when the Mars Dharakarika position becomes out of balance, it's a little more challenging because the Mars Dharakarika position can show someone who is overly aggressive. So a lot of time, if the moon, is, the Mars is unbalanced in the person's chart, that Mars Dharakarika can show abuse. Mm -hmm. It can show someone who batters their wife, a man who batters and hits their wife. There's nothing worse than that. And actually, believe it or not, it can show a woman who beats up her husband. So, so again, we have to understand that aggressive energy, when it's applied to positive sattvic things, and usually there's some other sattvic indicators in the native's chart or in the spouse's chart that would show that that energy goes towards bettering my health, bettering my career, you know, showing up at all my children's parent-teacher things. Maybe I'm a coach for my parents' sporting, right? I mean, for my, for my child's sporting events. I'm the coach of their baseball team. I'm the coach of their soccer team. I'm the coach of their track team. I mean, if you have the Mars Dharakarka, maybe your partner has this incredible role and they're, they seem to be at everything for your child and at everything for you that's important to you. And that's what's beautiful about the Mars Dharakarka position. But out of balance, it lends to an inability to control our aggressive tendency. So someone who's a strong built, driven and capable and just, you know, go-getter, energetic, right? That would be mostly the energy that we're looking at with the Mars Dharakarka. Yeah. I mean, you're looking for someone who, it, it ha they have that fire inside of them. And if someone was to describe their personality, they would call them fiery. Right. Definitely. Right. Uh, they, they're like energizer bunnies. I mean, sometimes with the Mars Dharakarika, you're going to go way to bed before your partner. Because <laughs> your partner might have not insomnia. They might, the person who burned the midnight oil, they like to work between 10 p.m. and 2 in the morning. Right. And Saturn, Saturn Dara, next to Saturn. So Saturn Dharakarika is my wife's Dharakarika. And we were looking at that earlier. So I've got a chance to understand this one personally. And so I'm 32 years old. My wife is 27. So like one of the things that you see with that Dharakarika of Saturn is you're going to be most compatible and most attracted to an older person, someone who's more mature. Because usually, you know, my wife has Saturn in Aquarius. She's very mature for her age. A lot of the women her age, you know, the, the, they're way more petty and they're not as focused on their careers and they're not as interested in having a family. And like my wife is very much a serious person uh, and she has a great light heart too. But 
you know, I'm very much serious about my career. I'm serious about the Joe Dish. They want someone who is going to be very much devoted in the relationship. They're not going to take the marriage lightly. You know, they're going to take the marriage very seriously. You know what I mean? I mean, luckily my Rahu's in Aquarius. So like, it's not too serious. You know what I mean? Like I can make lots of jokes, but like, I'm a, I'm generally an extremely serious person, like when it comes to most things. Um, and that's why I need that Rahu to kind of balance like the, the humorous, you know, mystical journey of life. That's about the journey and not the destination, but like for the Saturn Dharakarika position, you want a partner who is mature. You want a partner who is responsible. You want a partner is who is disciplined and loyal because that's what's going to benefit the most in the success of your life together and the longevity and sustainability of the marriage relationship. And so the Saturn Dharakarika position, you're most compatible with someone who is very much serious and disciplined about the areas of of, of, of their life, what are important to you. So, you know, you know, my, my, my wife's Saturn in, 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 in her Dara Karaka is in her fifth house, right? So that's education and that's children. You know what I mean? And like, I've wanted to have children since our first year of marriage, you know? Oh. So this is just an example of something I'm very, very serious about. And in the long run, when my, when my wife Saturn returns happening, which is in the next year, it's going to start to activate this energy of, okay, I'm already serious about something that when the time is right, she's going to have to be serious about it too. And it's also in her house of education. And when it comes to my, my career and the education of Jyotish, there's nothing I'm more serious about. I've dedicated my life to this science. So again, there is this aspect of, okay, I don't want someone who is too nonchalant. I don't want someone who is too easygoing because life is not easy. And so I want someone, if I have a Saturn Dharakarika, who's going to take life and the things that are important to me seriously too. Um, now, the unbalanced version of this, if you have a Saturn Dharakarika, is someone who's too serious, someone who can't mm -hmm. laugh, someone who can't joke. They have weak Mercury, weak Rahu, and Saturn very strong in their chart. And again, they're not able to enjoy life to the same extent. And then also, you know, Saturn can represent difficult experiences. And so something that's challenging about a Saturn Dharakarika is that your partner has been through many, many difficult experiences, and maybe it's hard for them to get over those experiences. I mean, my community knows that with, a, you know, a little over a year ago, my brother, he passed away, you know? This is something that my wife's Dharakarika position, like it suggests that like, yeah, I've been through some like really, really challenging life experiences um, that luckily I have a spiritual life that helps me work, you know, through those things in a, in a, in a way where I become stronger as a result of them. But not everyone is so lucky. Right. Oh, beautiful. Rahu and Ketu, do they, uh, do we take them as Dharakarikas too? Yes, we can take them as Dharakarika in the same way that we can take them as Atmakarika. I just wanted to go a little bit over with everyone because there was a lot of questions on the Atmakarika. How can the Rahu be um, Atmakarika or Dharakarika? And then how can the Ketu? And so it, it's written a lot by a lot of Jyotish that First of all, that we don't use Rahu or Ketu as the Atmakarika. And then it is the primary belief that only Rahu can be the Atmakarika or Dharakarika and not Ketu. But I want to be clear that I believe differently, as is my experience as a Jyotish astrologer. And I am saying that I'm a Rahu ascendancy. You know what I mean? So my opinion is not the majority opinion. My opinion is the minority opinion. And then not only Rahu can be the uh, Akarika, but that K2 can also be the Karika because I have literally seen in people's charts where K2 is having more of an Atma or Dara Karika influence. And so how do you tell which one is the Atma Karika or the Dara Karika, right? Um, so 
First of all, when it comes to the Dharakarika, you're looking for the planet of the lowest degree, and they're going to be at the same degree. So whichever one is strongest, right? That is, that is the one that I like to use as the Amakarika, right? And so if you're looking for the Dharakarika position, it'll also be at the same degree. But we're looking at terms of strongest here in terms of its influence on the seventh house, its influence on the Navamsha, right? So again, for the for the Atmakarika, we're looking for the strongest one overall. Is Rahu or K2 stronger in the chart? For example, I'm a Rahu Aquarius person, right? So and and so Rahu is strongest in the Aquarius Rashi. So for me, Rahu is stronger. Now for the Dharakarika, it's a little more specific because you're looking on the seventh house. Is K2 in the seventh house? Is Rahu in the seventh house? Then you would automatically use that as the Dharakarika position. Is Rahu or K2 aspecting the seventh house? Is Rahu or K2 in the Venus sign for a, for a man? Is Rahu or K2 in the Mars sign for a woman? So this is a, you know, it gets very specific and, it's, and it might be hard for you to tell it yourself because I, I, I do a very in-depth analysis when it comes to the karakas and how they're going to be influencing the individual's chart, Atma Karaka Rahu K2, Dara Karaka Rahu K2. But again, it's not a common opinion that K2 is ever a karaka. I'd say I'm one of a very small percentage of astrologers that will use K2 as a karaka. Now to get to the answer. If Rahu, is, and, and you'll know based on these significations, is Rahu or Ketu your Dharakarika? Because one of these is going to hit home more than the other. Um, and again, because of the Rahu Ketu permanently retrograde position, we're not using the highest degree. We're using a subtractive analysis. Now, for the Rahu Dharakarika position, this means that you're going to be most attracted to someone who is from another culture. So whatever religion you're born, whatever skin color you're born, odds are your spouse is different if you have the Rahu or Ketu as the Dharakarika. That might mean that it doesn't really matter what religion they were born in. It matters what religion or discipline they practice. You know, I was born to a Judeo-Christian, you know, family, but I practice Hinduism, you know? So it's not what you were born in, it's what you practice. But usually you will be attracted to someone outside your religious spiritual paradigm you were born, outside of the race that you were born maybe outside of the country you were born. And you'll also be attracted to someone who likes to travel to the foreign lands, who likes to experience the mystical uh, life, who is interested in astrology, who is interested in yoga, Ayurveda, you know, shamanism, you know, all of these different things that is kind of like on the fringe or outside of the general understanding of dogma. Because Rahu is very adogmatic, which means it, it, it is spiritual, but not in terms of religious law, not in terms of religious rule. It's spiritual in terms of our experience with the God through the chanting, through the kirtan, through the pranayama, through the daily sadhana. That's what you're going to be attracted to, who you're able to travel the world with this person and see all of the beautiful aspects of life outside of the country that you are born. Um, and then also because of the Rahu Dharakarika position, generally speaking, that means that your partner has been through very, very difficult experience and overcome that adversity a little to the, like the Saturn that we just discussed, but even more with the Rahu Dharakarika position, this might mean that they're the black sheep of their family, which means their family has a certain way that they are and this individual that you're the partner to is very outside of that kind of family. They're, they're looked at as being the strange person, the weird person in their family. And that is actually what makes them special, right? Who wants to be normal? I know as a Rahu Ascendant, the last thing I wanna be is normal. Normal is boring. Normal is unexciting. This is definitely true for the person that has the Rahu Dharakarika position. They're looking for someone who is very different not in just the way they look or in their beliefs, but in how they approach the life as well. I, right. one, one thing is the downside if you have the Rahu Dharakarika position is that um, these people, there can be secretive. They can mm -hmm. be dishonest. 
They can be, you know, someone who has two life, right? They have, they have one life that they show you and another life that they live in the secret. So again, if you have the Rahu Dara Karaka, make sure that your partner is transparent and honest in their life. Right. So I guess because mostly when um, I've seen when they calculate um, astrology um, calculation of your birth and details, usually when they give all the karakas, they don't like I've never seen giving them, you know, uh, Rahu or Ketu. So if someone really wants to find out, they could probably consult you and find out because I, I have never seen it on, you know, like, for example, AstroSage or other apps. I have never seen it being with different people's charts. So that would be interesting to know because otherwise, how would you really know, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I do Karaka focused uh, consultations where okay. we, we look at the Karakas in the D1 and the D7 and the D9 and we understand them. And to me, when it comes to the Rahu K2 thing, like, I think that sometimes Rahu and K2 are even more important than the other planets. And so it's, I love Rahu and K2. They rule our karma. You know, they they have more influence on our human life on a daily basis than a lot of the other planets do. And so to me, it's disrespectful to not consider them as karaka. Right. And some people, I think I've read it somewhere online that they just fo do focus reading just on Rahu and K2 because they're the main, you know, karmic and where you need to work on. So right in your chart. So that would be really interesting. Yeah, I mean, even my in my natal chart analysis, in my two-hour analysis, I'll spend at least 30 minutes discussing Rahu and Ketu's position. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, so if anyone needs uh, uh, to know about their Rahu Ketu, like if that's their karkas or their dara karkas, it'll be good to get a reading with the Shanati and find out, you know. It would be my honor and pleasure. And just to touch on the Ketu dara karka position. If, yeah. if, if you calculate and it could be Rahu or Ketu, you'll know based on these significations if it's Ketu. Because the Ketu Dara Karaka position is someone who is absolutely obsessed with the enlightenment. They are mm -hmm. obsessed with moksha. And again, that sounds great. That means you have a spiritual partner. It also means that, that you have a partner that doesn't care as much about regular life. They don't mm -hmm. care about job. They don't care about these attachments because the purpose of someone who has a K2 Dara Karaka means that your partner is going to help take you to the moksha. Right. And, and so if you have the K2 Dara Karaka, your person may be a renunciate. They are against the money. They are against the job. They are against the society. They are against the political party. They are against the government. These are, these are things that, again, is going to be helpful for someone who has the K2 Dara Karaka position to have a partner that helps grow them on their spiritual path. And so one of the things that I've seen when I do the Karaka analysis and I see K2 as the Dara Karaka planet in the chart, it usually means that the native has these attachments in their life, which we can see with the Rahu, we can see with the Venus, we can see what the attachments are for the person. So their spouse is there to help them remove that attachment. So if the person has attachment to money and the K2 is the Dara Karaka, your partner will take all your money. <laughs> yeah, so, so, it's, so they will, maybe they'll like to spend. They like to go on the, again, because of the influence, they like to travel. They like to get spiritual teachers. And so again, if K2 is the Dara Karaka for you, usually the things that you're most attached to, your partner is not attached to those things. If the native is attached to their mo mother or father and they have K2 Dara Karaka, then their partner has no attachment to their mother or father. Maybe their mother or father died when they were young and they just come to have this peaceful life without the influence of the mother or father, which is to show you that you don't need to have that attachment either. It doesn't mean that you don't love the thing. It doesn't mean that you don't appreciate thing. But when it comes to the moksha and the samadhi, we can't take anything with us when we leave this realm and we go to the sparga, the celestial dimension to join the paramatman, you know, you know, om tat sat. Like when we get to that moment, 
we cannot take anything with us. And so if you have the K2 Dara Karaka, understand that your partner has that role in your life to help you get there, which might not be easy, but it is a blessing. Right. That's so lovely, Shanti. What a wonderful session. Thank you, as always. Thank you, Navjeet. And thanks to everyone of Dr. Arjun Pai Astrology and the viewers on my channel. And, you know, Nav and I are very excited for whatever we're going to be doing together next. We, we, we love sharing this information with the, the Jyotish community. So thank you to all our viewers and, and, and Om Namah Shivaya. Hari Om. Thank you.